Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zheng Fei wanted to borrow horses from a wealthy man, Zhang Shuping, to help suppress the Yellow Turban Army. Zhang Shuping wondered if the brothers were talented enough to make good use of his horses for the suppression. He decided to give them a problem and promised to let them borrow the horses if they could solve it. The problem was to colour a map of the Han Dynasty, using at most four colours, such that the adjacent states didn't share the same colour. Liu Bei thought for quite a while about the problem but was unable to solve it. So urgent was the need to borrow the horses that he sought help using the magical tablet. So our three heroes are interested in building a stronger army, and so they go to visit Zhang Xueping in order to see if he'll sponsor them for horses. But Zhang Xueping is a wise man, and he sets them a challenge first to show that if he's going to sponsor them, then uh, they're going to show the capabilities is going to be able to defeat the Yellow Turban rebels. So he gives them this map of the Han Dynasty and says, four colour of this map. So let's look at a Minizink model to colour this map. So here we have an enumerated type, colour, which is made up of four different colours, green, blue, pink and yellow. And each of the different provinces is declared as a variable of this enumerated type colour. So province Su, we're going to have to decide which colour to colour that province in the same all the rest of the provinces. Now, we have to write down the constraints of the map. So any two provinces which are next to each other, we may have to make sure that they have a different colour. And so we've written down all those constraints. You can see there are so many that we've gone to a very small font size. Let's just look at a few of them. So the province Liang is next to the province Yong. And so we've written this constraint here. The constraint Liang is not equal to Yong. And similarly, the province Yong is next to province Yi. So we've written that constraint. Yong is not equal to Yi. The province Yong is next to the province Jing. So we've written that constraint. Yong is not equal to Ying. And the province Yong is next to Su. And so we've written this constraint. Yong is not equal to Su. And we write down all the rest of these uh, neighbour relationships between the different provinces. We must solve satisfy, we're just trying to find one particular solution to the map colouring problem. And we can run this mini-zinc model and we'll result in a colouring. It'll print out all the different colours of the map. Notice we didn't need an output function and we're just going to get for each particular province which colour it got. And if we look at the result, we'll see uh, a correct colouring of the map where every province is coloured different to every neighbour. So. <coughs> What we've seen here is a new feature of MiniZinc, which is enumerated types. So enumerated types are a way of defining a finite set of named objects. And then we can make decisions and parameters can be then about these enumerated types. And array indices, which we'll introduce later, can also be over these enumerated types. And we can also choose sets over these enumerated types, which we'll see shortly. So they're declared by this enum and then the name of the enumerated type. And then they're defined by this equality. A numeral name is then, then given this set of identifiers. So we gave the example of the set of different colours that we were given. And then we can declare the variables by this var and then the name of the enumerated type and then the variable name. Or if we don't have the var here, then it's a parameter and we're just picking a particular fixed uh, version of this enumerated type. So we can modify our program to have a different enumerated type. We just say, let's colour the graph with green, blue and pink. So can we colour this map with just three colours? And we could run our MiniZinc model then. We will result in this, unsatisfiable. Right? So this is a new kind of output we haven't seen before, and it should be fairly clear what it means. It means that there is no way of three colouring the map of the Han Dynasty provinces. So we know if you know that there is a four-colour map theorem says there's always a way of four-colouring a planar map like this one, but there's no way of colouring this map with three colours. And so our, mini our solver is telling us there is no possible way of solving this problem and giving back the result unsatisfiable. 
So in this lecture we've introduced enumerator types, which is a way of introducing a name set of objects. So their real importance is that they introduce a notion of type safety of models. If I have two different sets of objects that I'm making decisions about, then I don't want to mix them up. I don't want to make decisions about this one when I'm meant to be making decisions about that one. So enumerator types will in fact map down in the solvers to be integers. We could have used the numbers 1 to 4 to colour our map instead of these colour names. And in fact the numbers 1 to 4 is what the solver will see when it sees this problem. But by using this name type we not only get a model which is easier to understand but we also get this notion of type safety which will help us later on with more complicated models. We also saw for the first time an unsatisfiable model. We have to be clear that not every model has a solution. So sometimes we'll ask to find a solution there will be none. Uh, more often an unsatisfiable model will arise because we typed in a model incorrectly, there's a bug in our model or a bug in our data and unsatisfiable will be a trigger for us to try and find out what's going wrong. And the problem we solved here was graph colouring. This is a very classic problem in graph theory, edit applications in register allocation and compilers, in timetabling, a lot of other things. And of course, usually, as I'll usually say, pure graph colouring is better handled by specialised algorithms. So lots of problems uh, in graph theory have been studied intensely, like graph colouring. And if you're doing a pure graph colouring, problem then you should use a specialised algorithm. But if we add some side constraints about how specific parts of the graph should be coloured, uh, then using a general discrete optimization approach like MiniZinc is the way to go.